Hello folks! This video is the second part on Blender modeling for 3D printing using vertex displacement. Today we will use texture mapping functions in Blender to have more control on the displacement process. Vertex displacement gives us the possibility to speed up our modeling process and enables us to add a lot of detail to the model in a short time. In the first part of this topic, we went through the basic image handling and Blender setup. If you missed the first part, I will add a link here. In this part of the video, we will use multiple materials and textures on our model and use the UV mapping to position the displacements properly. And of course, we will use vertex displacement to add additional details to our models. The enhanced models can then be used for 3D printing, grading molds or CNC machining. I recently used this technique to create molds for metal casting and the first results are looking very promising as I can show here. But more on that later after the intro. In the following example, I will use the texture mapping function in Blender to show how to assign individual materials to selected faces or areas on our model. We can use this later on to assign different textures, UV maps and surface properties to our model. UV mapping maps the 2D pixel and color information of a texture to, to a point in 3D space and on our model surface. It can be used to provide color, lightning and other information to the renderer in relationship to the texture and tells him how to render a surface area of a model. For demonstration purpose and for better understanding how I assign displacements on a model, I prepared the following steps. First, I create the materials for specific areas, in this case phases. Second, then I create a texture mapping for the individual materials and create the related UV maps for it. And third, finally, I assign the displacements using the UV maps and images I already loaded in the model. Therefore, I use the displacement modifier. I use the displacement modifier in combination with the smooth modifier to smooth out the final result. This will make it easier later on for 3D printing, for example, for example to reduce steep overhangs. During the process, we will generate a lot of vertices. If you want to reduce the overall amount of the vertices later on, you can use the decimate modifier as I already described in the former video. The described process gives me good control over the positioning of the displacements and how the final result will look like. For those that are already familiar with texture mapping and want to focus on displacement, I will add a text with the timecode here. Now let's start with the example. Let's create a cube. There we are. And let's give him some defined measurement. Ten, ten, ten. Wonderful. So there we are. Here is our cube. Um, keep in mind, with all um, all basic objects in Blender, have a UV map assigned. So if we go to the UV editing workspace, we see here is already a UV map assigned in the background. So the vertices are linked to a UV map. If we activate synchronize, so both views are now synchronized. And if I select a face or a vertex here, I see it in the other, on the other side of the view. If I go into face selection mode, we can see this face, this vertices have a UV map uh, representation at this point. So this means this 3D coordinates, for example here, this 3D coordinate is mapped to this 2D coordinate on the image or let's say on the texture. We don't need the UV map right now and we will change the UV map settings later on. So therefore we just switch back in the layout workspace 
and proceed um, with assigning a material to different faces. So, by default, if I assign a material and I switch into edit mode, if we put the select button, we see this material, the first material or default material, is assigned to all vertices, to all faces. And what we now want to do is we want to have individual faces or vertex groups assigned a specific material. Therefore, we switch into face selection mode. Well, let's better go into the front view. So I'm now in the front view. And let's create a new slot and create a new material. Instead of using the numbering, we just name it front. So now we have new active material here in our material slot. Now I want to assign this face to this material. Therefore, I go into face selection mode. I pick my material and, and push assign. Now this material is assigned to this face and this vertices. If I push select, I see, aha, uh -huh, the material is assigned to this face. If I select our default material, I see, okay, it's assigned to all other vertices. Now I can assign a material to every face. Let's say here on the right side, I create a new material and name it right, assign, check, okay. And on the left side, Create a new material, name it left, assign, and on the back side, create a new material, name it back. Okay. So, to make the material visible, we can change the colors. For example, let's pick the front material and select a specific base color. For example, yellow. Now we can see the material assigned to this face is yellow. On the right side, we can assign blue. On the left side, we can assign green. And on the back side, we can assign red. If we assign, if we assign a color to the default material, Then we can see all not assigned interfaces will get this will get this, will show this color. Then we can see that all remaining faces that have no specific material assigned will show this color. Now we proceed and using textures instead of a base color. Again we're going into the front view and now we want to assign a texture to this face. Therefore, I go to my material, front, and instead of base color, I pick image texture. Now we can choose an image, image texture from the file system. Currently, we have only the default UV map in the background mapped. By default, we have the standard UV map assigned in the background. This means here under vector, we see the default setting. And this means we currently use the default setting and default UV map. You can see the UV map that is assigned here in the object data properties. You can see the UV map. You can also name it 
we can have up to eight UV maps with different settings. Instead of using the default setting as it is, we go into the UV editing workspace. We make sure that the synchronization between the views is activated. I just activate the display of the colors and texture mapping. As we can see now, this is the default UV mapping for this front face. I want to use the complete picture on this face. Therefore, I go into the front view, autographic view perspective, push the one on the number keypad and say UV mapping project from view bounce. This will use the bounce of the image as the size of the, of the UV mapping for this face. As we can now see, as we can now see, the UV mapping is scaled onto the picture and the image is completely displayed on this face. Later on, we will use this functionality to position or vertex displacement on our object. We can proceed in a, in a similar way. For example, let's pick the material for the right side. It's the same procedure. Pick the material for the right side and use an image texture. Select an image texture from the file system. Let's select the face and see how it looks like. Okay, here have the same. Here we also want to scale the UV mapping to use the complete picture. Therefore, I go into UV mapping, project from view, make sure you're in the autographic view, make sure you have used the number keys to select your faces. In this case, it's the right side. If I select this face, you see it's currently only this part of the image and I want to scale it up. Therefore, just go into project from view. And again, here we can see we're using now the UV mapping is scaled to the bounds of the picture. Okay, this looks nice. Let's do this same thing on the left side. So, and there we are. Instead of using the default vector setting here, we can in the same way select the UV map and pick our current UV map. But in the end, the result is the same because this is the default behavior. This will change if we use multiple UV maps with different settings. For example, if we want to combine different textures like, like uh, decals, I recommend to use one UV map. This um, makes the overall handling of the textures and the UV mapping less complicated. We have now the images assigned to the faces. I think for the example, this is totally fine. This is all we need to know about texture mapping and UV mapping for the vertex displacement. Let's now start with vertex displacement. Let's say we want to start with this and we want to use vertex displacement defined by the color information of this picture. Therefore, we want to move our vertices in relation to the color value of the image on a certain position of the, on the image. I now start with this image. I go into the modifier tab at the displace modifier. And from there, I can create a new texture. I name it front. I can. Now I add a picture to the texture. I'm picking the same picture that we did use for the texturing. I use my UV map to specify 
how this texture will be used on the object and for the vertex displacement. And if I have now a look onto my object, I see that there is a strange deforming of the object is going on. So why this is happening? So the first thing is, if we do not restrict the vertex displacement modifier, it will use the complete object. It will try to deform the complete object based on the information given by this texture. If we do not restrict the displace modifier, it will affect the complete object based on the information given by this texture. The first thing we have to do, we have to restrict, we have to restrict the vertex displacement on this face. This can easily be achieved by defining a vertex group. Group front. Let's assign, let's select the face and assign the face to this group. Now we have a vertex group and we can use this vertex group to restrict the modifier to use only the vertices that, in, that are in the vertex group. So as we can see, the deformation does no more occur because we restricted the, the modifier to work only with the vertices in that group. Okay, this looks quite good, but we see no displacement at all. Why we do not see displacement? To make the displacement work, we need to, to have more geometry. So how we do that? We just, we, se we select the complete geometry using subdivide from the edge menu in edit mode. Here, let's start with 100 subdivisions. Now we have enough geometry to show the effect of the vertex displacement. As you can see, only the faces of our vertex group are affected by the displacement modifier. We can use the vertex displacement dialog to adjust the displacement settings. As you can see, the overall res resolution is not good enough. Therefore, we have to give the displacement modifier a little bit more geometry. Again, I select everything and split using edge split. As a result, you can see that this resolution is now quite good and much better than before. Okay, even if you go to very high details here and you subdivide your object more in case you want to 3D print the result. Keep in mind, your printer cannot print all the details and you can only use a resolution that really can be used by your printer. The processing will slow down and yeah. So uh, adjust the resolution to your needs. I see that I have some outliers here. How can I solve that? As, as you can see, I can try to adjust the mid-level and try to fix that. Some of the vertices are affected, or in this case, the displace modifier affected some of the vertices that are on the edge or near to the edge. And therefore, this strange effect appears. We can solve this easily by adjusting our vertex group. Let's go into the, let's go into the object data properties. Let's pick our vertex group. I now switch to edit mode, go into the object data properties and select my vertex group. So I now select these faces and remove them from the vertex group. As we can see now, the Displace modifier does not affect this area and therefore we do not have this strange displacement in the area of the edge. In the same way, we can go and select the lower edge and proceed in the same way. Select the area that you do not want to have to be affected. Go into your vertex group and remove the vertices. Check by, select your vertex group and you can see now this area and this area is removed from the vertex group and voila, it looks much better now. Okay, still it looks a little bit rough. To solve this, 
we can smooth the overall result. Again, therefore we choose the, therefore we go into the modifier tab and add a smooth modifier. Let's add some more repeats. Voila. The positive effect is here that now it smooths out the geometry and the overhang. This gives us an advantage for 3D printing. Adjust the settings to your needs. You have to see how your geometry in your model is affected by the smooth modifier. You have to play around with the parameters to get the best result for your requirements. Sometimes if I want to have, maybe you want to have a smooth overhang but a flat surface on the top, you can play around with the axis setting to achieve this result. To restrict the smooth modifier to only this phase, it's, we can again use a vertex group. In the same way we use the vertex displacement for this phase, we can use it on the other phases. Let's do another example for the right side. Now everything is set up and voila, here is the displacement for the Driscalion. Again, adjust the parameters to match with your requirements. Here is another example I prepared for 3D printing using the techniques I already described. After modeling the surface details, I prepared the model for 3D printing. I described this process in the former video on this topic. It is important to limit the amount of vertices, therefore I use the decimate modifier. I found that I can reduce the overall amount of vertices up to 80% without noticeable effects for 3D printing. Because the lower resolution of the 3D printer will smooth out the geometry anyway. But this depends on your model geometry. See the final 3D printed result at the end of the video. Well, that's all for today. So what's in the content pipeline to be released in the near future? First, in the next video, we will focus on some details using decals or let's say subtexture structures. We will also have a look on the topic of using multiple UV mappings and distorted UV mappings for vertex displacement. Using the described procedures, we can get very nice high detailed results for surface structures that we can use in 3D printing, CNC machining or even metal casting of 3D parts. If you like the content, please give me a like to make, to make this video more popular and of course, if you are interested in the coming content, subscribe to my channel. That's all for today. Stay healthy and take care of your beloved ones in this pandemic times. Thanks for watching.